Take a deep breath, let's go. Starting off at number 10, we have Dracula's Castle. Although the vampire Dracula is a fictional character, the actual castle that his fictional castle is based on is very real. Its real name is actually Bran Castle and it sits on a cliff and is believed to be haunted by the spirits of the criminals who were executed by the former ruler of Wallachia, Vlad the Impaler. Vlad really enjoyed punishing criminals as the story goes, hence the name Impaler was given to him. The castle is quite similar to Dracula's castle described in Bran Stoker's novel of Dracula. Next up at number 9 we have the Poenari Castle. This fortress is believed to be haunted by the spirit of Vlad the Impaler's wife who jumped off a cliff. This fortress was used by Vlad the Impaler himself on certain occasions, however it's not his spirit that haunts it. It's believed that his wife had to choose between ending her own life or being captured by the Turks. She decided to jump off a high cliff by the castle and people have said that they have seen orbs of light at night time where she supposedly took her own life. The Corbin Castle comes in at number 8. Allegedly, the castle's dungeon is the place where Vlad the Impaler himself himself was imprisoned for years, which caused him to go insane and his thoughts became increasingly darker. But he was not the only one that was imprisoned at the castle. The legend goes that three Turkish men were captured and asked to dig a well, and they were promised that they would go free once they found water. But the men however never got set free. It said that they wrote on the walls of the well, you now have water, but you don't have a heart. Now we journey into the Devil's Precipice. The village of Cosminelli is said to be haunted by the spirits of the dead who are trying to protect hidden treasure. The village of Cosminelli, also known as Devil's Precipice, has a hidden treasure that no one has been able to find. It's believed that this place is haunted by spirits of those who are trying to protect this buried treasure and that's where it got its name from, the Devil's Precipice. Those who have tried to look for the treasure have found themselves kilometers away from the area that the treasure is supposed to be. People still have no idea how they moved or even who moved them. It's like they suddenly teleported to a different location. Visitors have also reported hearing weird noises and strange sounds. Yeah, that's very creepy. Guiamana is up next. So decades ago in the Apuseni Mountains, you would have seen the village of Guiamana. It had a population of about a thousand people and today the only thing left standing is the church tower and about 20 houses as well as there's a sea of toxic waste. So what happened was back in the year 1977, Nicolae Ceausescu, former president of Romania, decided to mine copper in the area. And the largest copper deposit in Europe was there at that time. But then locals sensed that something really bad was approaching. They started to notice that cherry trees started to die and then the creek started turning red. In only a couple of years, the whole village was flooded by toxic waste and most of the villagers were forced to evacuate and they had to go start living somewhere else. But around 20 of them still live in the village and they're lucky because their houses were built on higher ground. Bahena Pula, also known as the Red House, it got its name from its color. And the house actually looks like it's been taken straight out of a classic horror film. It's considered to be one of the top tourist destinations in the Philippines for ghost hunters. And it's believed that this house was the place where women were held captive and burned during the Japanese era. Some visitors believe that the red color of the house might actually be stains of blood that seeped through the very fiber of the house and stained it forever. Wailing sounds, screams, and temperature changes, as well as creepy feelings like people are watching you, have all been experienced by people. So yeah, this house has been the topic of discussion for some time and uh, recently they even made a film about it. Next up we journey over into Lambusan Public Cemetery. As a public cemetery it is believed to be a prime spot for hauntings. When the family members of those who passed away can no longer afford to pay the rent on their graves, well their loved ones remains are then placed in a communal space. 
and it's known as one of the most depressing cemeteries in the world. You can't really avoid seeing skulls and bones just scattered everywhere. I couldn't imagine the sight. Malinta Tunnel comes next. Malinta Tunnel is one of the scariest places in the Philippines. Like any other tunnel that can give you an uneasy feeling of being trapped and boxed in, well, this tunnel is one of the places where a lot of soldiers were eliminated. Shadows as well as unexplainable noises and even sudden changes in wind direction and temperature, all of that stuff. That has all been reported to have manifested here at the tunnel. From there, we look at the La Perel Mansion. Before being the site of the Philippines Bamboo Foundation's Ifugao Bamboo Carvings exhibit, the La Perel White House was shrouded in mystery. People reported seeing a woman dressed in white and a small child inside. Now, the Japanese had reportedly used this mansion as a chamber to torment people during the World War II era, as well as all sorts of evils were done to women while they slept. This is why the caretakers of the mansion, who claim to have seen ghosts several times, they stay on guard while they're inside of the house. It's even been reported that taxi drivers have refused to travel down the La Perle Mansion's road at night, especially because of the sightings that they might see. Now we end this episode off at number one, we have the Diplomat Hotel. The Dominicans built the Diplomat Hotel in the year 1911 as a seminary. And at first it was converted into a school, then eventually it was converted into a hotel. Now there are some rumors that exist out there that when the Japanese conquered Baguio, the nuns and priests who had taken in fleeing Filipinos were eliminated in very unsettling ways. And over the years, many residents and visitors reported hearing screams and seeing ghosts with no heads. In 1892, Lizzie Borden was the main suspect for the axe murders of her father and stepmother. Borden was tried and acquitted of the murders and guests who visit Lizzie's house in Fall River, Massachusetts say she can be heard cackling around the property. Others say that you can sometimes hear a maid screaming for help and that Lizzie's slaughtered parents still walk the grounds. You can experience the paranormal activity for yourself by visiting the Lizzie Borden house, which is now a museum and a bed and breakfast. All right, our next stop is the Los Feliz Murder Mansion. During the mid 20th century, this was the home of Dr. Harold Perelson and his family until the horrific night of December 6, 1959, when he murdered his wife in her sleep and attempted to murder his three children before killing himself. Luckily, the eldest daughter let out a scream, waking up the younger children who then ran to escape the same fate. Two years later, it was sold to the Enrique family who used it as a storage unit until it was sold to a couple in 2016 who apparently had plans to fix it up. But it seems to have scared them off somehow because within just a few short years, it is now on the market again. This next location you may have heard of as it's quite famous, the Jean Harlow House. In 1932, it was home to the iconic actress, of course, Jean Harlow. Carlo and her abusive husband, Paul Byrne, who shot himself in the head while standing in front of the mirror. Their butler discovered him and strangely called MGM instead of the police. So there were tons of rumors that it wasn't really a suicide. Many suspected Burns' ex-girlfriend, a suspicion that was exacerbated by her jumping off a boat to her death just a couple days later. The stories get creepier, okay? In 1963, celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring bought the home and lived there with his girlfriend Sharon Tate until she left him. They were still friends and remained so until both of them were shockingly murdered by the Manson cult. When Tate had lived there, she told several friends that once when she was sleeping in the master bedroom alone, she saw a creepy little man. Her friends say she believed it to be Paul Burns's ghost. She was so freaked out that she ran out of the room and then saw a hanging shadowy 
corpse with its throat slit in the hallway. There are also stories about two other people dying in the swimming pool over the years. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of paranormal activity, probably too much for my liking. Coming in at number seven, we have the Villisca Axe Murder House. On June 10th, 1912, Josiah and Sarah Moore were bludgeoned to death inside of their home in Villisca, Iowa. Their four children and two friends who were spending the night were also killed. And to this day, the crime remains unsolved. Their home is considered one of the most haunted houses in the country and guests are drawn to it from all over. Tours are even rumored to have been cut short by children's voices, falling lamps, moving ladders, and flying objects, says the Velisca Axe Murder House website. And in 2014, a paranormal investigator stabbed himself after spending the night. Skeptics have come and left believers adds the website. All right, up next we have the Lemp Mansion. The Lemp Mansion in St. Louis, Missouri is known to be one of the most haunted places in America due to its tragic history. The 33-room home was built in the 1860s by William Lemp, a successful brewery owner who ended up killing himself in 1904 after the youngest of his four sons, Frederick, died. A few years later, his wife also died of cancer in in the house. Then in 1922, William Lemp Jr. shot himself in the same room that William Sr. killed himself. And as if it weren't enough tragedy for one place, in 1949, Charles Lemp, Williams' third son, shot his dog in the basement of the home and then killed himself in his room. According to Destination America, witnesses have experienced burning sensations and slamming doors. 